Hello everyone, I'm Caitlin. And I am Jillian. And we are the hosts of the OK Drama Podcast. With two friends, recap and break down K-dramas one episode at a time. Yay! May! Merry almost Christmas, everyone! <laughs> Happy <laughs> almost New Year, everybody! Yay! 2021, we see you. We see you. We're, we have such high hopes for you. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but let's let's keep our expectations low. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if 2020 has taught me anything, it's... Uh, Don't make know. a year your year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just do the best you can with what you've got. Yes, totally. Try to make the most of life until you die. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Should should we do the housekeeping thing? Yeah, let's let's housekeep. Okay. Um so, if you want to talk <clears throat> to Jill and me about your 2021 plans and what you're excited to watch in the upcoming year, you can tweet us at okdramapod or you can send us a message on Instagram, okdramapodcast or Facebook also OK Drama Podcast, or you can send us an email at okdramapodcast at gmail.com. We love emails. So even if we it's do. just like, hey guys, what's up? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's cute. We're into it. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? We have a Patreon where you can listen to bonus episodes of our podcasts like me and Cousin David covering Sky Castle Andrew and Jill covering Strangers from Hell. A favorite of mine. Yes. Also, side note, um, did, have you heard of the app? I think it's just called Webtoon. And they have Webtoons that are translated yes. into English. Oh, Yes. Is Strangers from Hell on there? It is. Okay. But it was a little bit confusing to like navigate. I was looking on the mm. website. I didn't get the app. I was like, okay. I don't get this. So I gave <laughs> up, but <laughs> maybe needed to look a little bit better. Yeah, because I saw someone talking about a drama that was based on a webtoon, and they were like, where can I read the webtoon? And people kept talking about that app, so. Yeah, I believe AT1 class is on there as well. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Oh, that kind of brings us to our website. Or, uh, rewind a little bit. Patreon. <laughs> You get bonus episodes. You also, if you move up the tiers, can get exclusive stickers and patches mm-hmm. and bonus hangouts with me and Jill. Those Super are always fun. fun. Yeah. Like, I was, I've been thinking of, like, all of the K-pop videos I want to show Jill. <laughs> so, if y'all want a little K-pop party, let us know. Maybe even not on Patreon. Maybe just be, like... A little bonus, a little bonus thing. Yeah. On agreed. the YouTubes. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Fast forward to our website where you can find links to Patreon and links to past episodes where we covered shows like Itaewon Class um, and some of our other favorites like Hotel de Luna and Descendants of the Sun. So fun. Side note on Descendants of the Sun. I've become mildly obsessed with the boy group shiny and like i told you last time i think the Mm -hmm. the younger male doctor is a member of shiny Mm -hmm. and it is so weird seeing him like because i knew him as an yeah i knew him as an actor first right like i Mm -hmm. didn't know about i had heard of shiny but i didn't know he was in it Mm -hmm. and oh my god he can sing like a freaking opera singer Wow. It's insane. So anyway. Um, so yeah. Our website has fun stuff. It also has links to Chebok Box and Fashion Shingu, where we get a small commission if you buy f- stuff from our link. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I still haven't purchased the Bongsoon sweater, but, you know, 2021 might be the year for that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's possible. Anything. We'll see what happens. Um... <laughs> We also have an Etsy store yes. um, where we have 
those exclusive stickers and patches and we also have very cute pins mm -hmm. and i have to say again i said this last episode but the sojourn drama pins are like little hot sellers people love them they're really so, cute so um if you need like a cute little gift for someone for christmas or the new year or hanukkah or whatever even though like most everything's going to be passed by the time <laughs> You um, order it and it gets delivered, but it could be a late gift. Mm -hmm. If you're um, like, oh crap, I forgot this person. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little cute something. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very affordable. Mm hmm. We also have like sticker forms of the Soju and Drama pin, which yes. are really fun mm -hmm. and they're also really affordable. Mm hmm. Is that it? Totally. I think so. Oh, also please rate and review the podcast. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Please do. Jill loves getting new ratings. She texts me. She's like, we got more. <laughs> yes, I get very excited. I get very happy when um, people validate us. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yes. And that validation right now is very important to help us move up in the pod. So yeah, it's really exciting when you guys are nice to us. Yeah, and it's just like we're not, like, just wasting our time, right? Yeah, and it's not just, like, we're making this pod for little K-drama ghosts. <laughs> for Mr. Machoka in your yes. house. Yes, <laughs> the ghosts in my house. We're just, um, we're doing it for you guys mm -hmm. and having fun, so thank you. Yes, thank you. Also, it's so we can have, like, a valid excuse to watch dramas watch and talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have to watch this show. It's work, basically. Mm hmm Yes. Yeah, so um, the next few episodes after this are going to be a little different, just mm -hmm. because Jill and I didn't want to start something so close to the holidays and the new year and our 100th episode. Mm hmm <laughs> So. Wow. I know. It's kind of crazy. Um. So, we won't have a new full-time drama probably for the next three weeks. So, tweet us what you guys want us to cover after that, because Jill and I are still, like, tossing around some ideas. I'll probably put a poll up um, maybe a week or two-ish before we record our next drama. So, check our Twitter and or just tell us, like, please, please, please cover this one. Mm -hmm. Um, we prefer Netflix dramas, but if it's a Vicky one and it's, like, super freaking good. We'll, like Flower we of Evil it. Good? Yes. I really want to watch Tell Me What You Saw, which is another, like, crime thing. It's on Vicky. Well, I really enjoyed Flower of Evil and that whole crime thing. Like, that was fucking good. I know. Ugh. Totally binge-worthy. For sure. Yeah, shout out to Play on K if you want to yes. um, hear us talk about Flower of Evil. Go to the Play on K podcast. Those girls are so fun. They're kind and of hear like, them like break down episodes. Yeah, because we just did like the the overall episode the recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're kind of like me and Jill mm -hmm. in a way. <laughs> so yeah, they're fun. Um, like, a little less vulgar, but, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, I guess that's it. We are here yeah. to cover the last two episodes of School Nurse Files. Yay! Yay, and question, did you understand it? Um, okay, I read, like, four <laughs> different recaps, and I feel like I kind of got it. Before you read the recaps, did you get everything? No, I didn't. Okay, because I didn't, and I did not read recaps. I was like, I kind of felt like I got it, but I was like, wait, what? But I don't know if you've read the outline yet. Mm -hmm. I'll just throw this in right now. I don't know which recap I read this on, but people were saying this was like a mid-series finale or mid-season finale. So um... people are expecting like six more episodes to drop later. Interesting. Okay. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Because, mm -hmm. like, this was based on a book, so I don't think that's how the book ends. Mm -hmm. Again, like, this is not me thoroughly researching this. This is just, yeah. I read it, like, maybe on Drama Beans or something. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, when I heard that, I was like, okay, maybe that makes a little more sense. But I feel like they wrapped it up enough so that it could end. So maybe they were doing the thing where, like, if people liked it, then we'll make more. If not, mm-hmm. like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of Netflix shows are doing that where they'll release, like, 10. Mm-hmm. And then wait like six months and then release the next 10 or something yeah. like that, which is kind of annoying, but you know, whatever oh, yeah. Netflix. For people that like to binge. Yeah, like you're you're messing with the standard K drama model, which has worked <laughs> for everyone for like I don't know how long, but whatever. <laughs> they got the monies so they can do whatever they want, I guess. Yes. Okay. Well, I feel like we should just try to make sense of this okay do you want to go first or do you want me to go first um i can read this one okay cool all right so we are on episode five Mm -hmm. unyang reunites with an old friend with symphony for symphony wow (laughs) with (laughs) with sympathy for hyman's hyman's Mm -hmm. hyman's lonely world Un Young seeks out ways to help her outlive her fate. Yeah. Okay. okay, I don't know why the last two were so, like, punny. These, uh, It was a different, uh, writer. writer. <laughs> <laughs> they were just, like, drunk on the job. They were uh-huh. like, aha! This is funny. <laughs> Naughty. Yeah. Naughty. And <clears throat> it's hard to stomach. <laughs> Um, so we start with a flashback and see Unyang as a child in school. She's forced to sit next to a boy named Kang Sun. Both kids are kind of outcasts at school. People talk about them, blah, blah, blah. They mm-hmm. end up becoming friends with each other. And then we fast forward to present day and we see that Kang Sun has come to see Unyang as a ghost jelly. And at first you don't really notice it. Like you just think they bumped into each other. Mm-hmm. But then you see he's like not actually there. Mm-hmm. It's sad. <laughs> um, for sure. he, po- he apologizes for not leaving and, quote, shattering into a million pieces. And the two um, hang out with each other. Mm-hmm. And so we don't quite know what shatter into a million pieces means, but we get a pretty good idea. Yeah. We can <laughs> kind of think back to Goblin. And... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> totally. Um, back at school, the friends decide to go to a party at Nore- Norebang. Mm-hmm. And we learn that Hyman has to stay within a 5.38 kilometer radius to of where she lives. I don't know what happens if she goes past that, but she's like, I can't go. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, tits, you can't go. This <laughs> sucks. Yeah. But it's so strange because I know they like know her story, mm-hmm. but they also don't really question anything. Like, yeah, those kids are weird. I'd be like, you eat what now? You're gonna, you're gonna die when you're how old? Because of why now? <laughs> I would be so confused. Why can't you leave? <laughs> you're stuck here. Uh, the next day at school, Lin Young talks to Heyman about a way to extend her life, and she's reluctant because she wants to protect her friends and the school, and she's like, but if. If I do this procedure, who's going to help them? Like, Mm -hmm. I need to be here. But ultimately, Eun-young presses her, and she's saying that it would be better to live a normal life rather than eating mites forever. True. Mm -hmm. I don't want to eat mites. No. And this is Eun-young, like, kind of projecting her own feelings about her life. Like, Mm -hmm. how she can see the jellies, and it's, like, kind of on her to save other people, even though she doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to deal with that sort of shit. Yeah, it's like a burden. Yeah, and so she doesn't want that for this little girl. Mm-hmm. So she's trying to like push her in that direction. Mm-hmm. Unyang and Inpyo have a little moment together when they go to meet the woman who could potentially save Heyman. Unyang seems a little jealous, but she ends up holding Inpyo's hand, and Kong Sun gives attitude from the back seat. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't like this guy. Yeah. And then at one point, like, she says something, like, shut up or whatever. And it feels like, I didn't say anything. Because mm-hmm. he can't hear or see this guy. So right. <laughs> it's just, it's a weird little car moment. Mm-hmm. 
Um, there's a gross scene with fish happening. Yeah, um, I did not like that. No, not at all. Uh, and then this fish woman, like, gives the price to save Heyman, and it's really high. Mm-hmm. Um, but then Heyman doesn't even want to do the surgery anyway, so it's kind of like, do I pay this much? And she doesn't even want to do it, or what? Yeah. Um, when Yang gets frustrated with Heyman, as it seems like she's trying to live a free life through her. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Kong Sun's jelly health starts to decline, and it appears he may have to leave soon. We see him, like, walking really slow. Yeah. He's and breathing it, heavy. And... His, it's like, um, his skin is almost, like, glowing. Yes. It's kind of it's, weird. Yeah, it looks sad. Mm-hmm. And he says it hurts a lot. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when Young goes to visit a childhood friend, Jelly, who ends up being um, a little girl. And this little girl has started to lose a grasp of time of who everyone is. Because she's like, I saw my mom, but now my mom is like really old. And then you were, you were my age. Now you're old. And this little girl just doesn't know what's happening. Yeah, she's like, can I call you my mom? Uh-huh. And, and then, like, like, she turns. Nope. She tur- <laughs> Do not. She turns and there's, like, blood coming out of her little hat. hmm Sad. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Wen Yang is tempted to end her, but decides not to since the girl isn't hurting anyone and she doesn't appear to be suffering. She's just fucking lost and confused. Not a big deal. Yeah, she's just eating her little chips. Uh-huh. Munching on those chips. Mm-hmm. I like how the subtitles just said, munching. <laughs> munching I didn't notice sounds. that. <laughs> That's cute. At least on my end it said that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, Yang opens up to Kong Sun about how tough her life has been and the emotional toll the jellies take on her. She decides to take it upon herself to persuade Heyman to get the surgery so at least she can have a normal and happy life. Unyang gathers all of the mites and makes Heyman eat them all. And that seems gross. It's just like jars and jars and jars of mites. Also, she's like shoving, I guess, human food into Heyman's yeah. mouth. Yeah. So like, because she needs to have regular food or else she'll get an upset stomach. So that girl must be so full. <laughs> it's so gross looking. Yeah. And those, those little mites, like the sound they make when they're in her mouth. And uh, they're gross. It, mm-hmm. um, after a while, Heyman decides to go through with the procedure as Unyoung promises to protect the school for her. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm going to be here, blah, blah, blah. I'll do it. Don't worry Which about it. Sounds awful for Unyoung. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that school's just fucked. Unyoung talks to Kong Sun and he tells her how he died as he suppresses his jelliness. Yeah, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> Um, he pushes her to quit school because he's afraid it's going to bring her spirit down and hurt her and he just says like you you need to quit you shouldn't be at that school anymore like that school's bullshit and it's like a monster basically Mm -hmm. Um, Unyoung admits that she wants to quit and live a normal life but she can't avoid her destiny in life Mm -hmm. Kong Sun starts to deteriorate and then they cry together as he begs her to go with him Oh, that and was we, so sad. I know. And we get another flashback of the friends back in school, and we see Kong Sun giving Un Young a flip book he made that depicts her wielding a sword and is seeing her future. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's like begging her to go with him, and she starts crying and screaming and saying, like, I can't go with you. She's what are like, you go where? About? Like, yeah, where do you like, want me to go? Ugh. What's happening? Uh-huh. And then when he fucking, like, when he's, like, crying and she's crying and suddenly, like, all these red noodles fly out of him. <laughs> it was so gross looking. Yeah, it was gross looking. They, they just, like, have to make them, like, meat colored. Uh, yeah, they just shoot, like, straight out from behind him. Uh-huh. I don't know. It, it made me uncomfortable. <laughs> see, yeah, and that's the thing, like, I feel like Unyoung had to manage the, like, do I put this person out of their misery, or do I keep mm-hmm. them around to, like, because they want to be around, and because I want them around, too, so, yeah. like, it probably would have been better if she would have just 
hit him with a sword, and then he could have burst into a bunch of little hearts instead yeah. of... Yeah. Because what he went through seemed painful. Yeah. Whereas the sword thing, it's it's maybe a little painful, but it seems to, like, end them really quickly. Right. And, he and then just... you just have the little hearts. Yeah. So, but that's tricky. I mean, like, not to make this too dark or anything, but it kind of reminded me of, like, trying to figure out if you should, like, put a pet down. Like, mm-hmm. like do, do you, obviously you want them, you want to keep them alive because you want them alive. But, like, yeah. at a certain point, like, there comes a time for everyone and are you just keeping them around because you want them around mm-hmm. or because yeah, like, they'll actually have a good life. Yeah. <sighs> so that's hard. That's yeah. a shitty situation. And I would not yeah. want to deal with that if I was Unya. No. <laughs> not with someone you went to school with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, back in present day, Unya ends up sobbing at a construction site. Um, and the crane breaks and we see Kong Sun frozen staring up at it. And he gets crushed by it. She moves closer and sees it was her body under the construction rubble. What? Mm-hmm. And then Unyoung jolts awake and calls her acupuncturist friend, Fasu. And she tells her how she dreamed of her death and now she can't see jellies. What? Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Odd. I know. I was very confused um, as to how she cannot see jellies anymore. I, at yeah. first, I thought it was, like, Mackenzie's doing um, or something, because she had that red mark yes. on her neck after she fucked with those plant jellies, right? Yeah. Um, But then I was like, or is her friend, did you, like do her a solid and, like, somehow in his death, like, took her ability mm-hmm. with him. I don't know. You'll probably never find out because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to answer that question for us. Yeah, but interesting. I feel like episode six is where the questions come in. Yeah. Episode six, like, answers some questions, but... I feel like there are a lot of plot holes Mm -hmm. and just like, well, what happened with this and what happened with that? And why did this happen? Yeah, this is a drama where it probably should have been longer than six episodes. Mm -hmm. Maybe like Mm -hmm. eight, you know, like if we could just get a little bit more backstory because it was confusing, but still enjoyable. Yes, definitely enjoyable. But not everything is tied with a pretty knot on this show. Yeah. <laughs> they don't they don't tie everything up with a little knot just saying, hey, this is done. Mm-hmm. This thing is finished. Yeah. So maybe if we get more episodes, they will yeah. do that for us. But yeah. I don't I haven't heard anything about season two other than <laughs> on that one article, so <laughs> hmm. um so let's just assume that this is the end. For okay. now. Okay, so, episode six. The synopsis says, Evil floods the school with uncontrollable negative energy. Eun-young reaches her limit and makes a difficult decision with Inpyo by her side. Okay, and then I said side note. Is this a <laughs> mid-season finale? <laughs> okay. So, episode six starts with Heyman in surgery, and the doctor is commenting on how she doesn't have a belly button. <laughs> Um, I think the doctor is an old friend of Eun Young's when she used to be a nurse at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, so she kind of, like, knows what's up, I guess. Uh, the surgery is ultimately successful, and the doctor shows Eun Young the creature in Heyman's stomach. And it's a weird-looking, kind of looks like an eggplant with teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it has... Uh, Chinese characters on it that say Guje, which means saving others in trouble. But we see that Unyang can't actually see the creature as she's lost her ability to see jellies, so she's just kind of like staring at an empty jar. So, (laughs) 
she can't she can't see it, but the doctor can. Yeah, I think the doctor has the ability to see jellies. So maybe that's why she was like she's a Mackenzie type where mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. Um mm. I guess she's, you know, clued in on the whole thing. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, with that saying, uh, saving others in trouble, mm-hmm. that seems like maybe you shouldn't have taken it out of her stomach. I mean, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> like, that little ugly creature seems to have been doing a good job. Well, yeah. I guess that's the thing, like, that was the whole thing. Just because you can do it, or... Mm-hmm. Just because you have the ability, does that make it your burden to bear? Mm-hmm. Sometimes, yes. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, but it is kind of unfair that Haman is st- stuck as being a mite eater, because <laughs> it seems like she's been that way for like, yeah. eternity, whereas, like, in other Korean stories we've seen, like, people get reincarnated into something else. So it's like, if yeah. this was her you know, one of her lives, and she had to live it as a my eater then, like, <laughs> sorry, sis, just deal with it. <laughs> Get through this life. Yeah. Um, but it seems like she's done this for a while, so that mm-hmm. kind of sucks, but... I'm glad I'm not a mite eater Me too. What if we yeah. are, and we've just been sleeping on the job? <laughs> 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 oh, oh my god. We lived past 20, though, so I guess we're in the clear, but... <laughs> We got, like, crossed off the list somehow. They <laughs> lost our name. Computer system crash. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, in Tale of the Nine-Tailed, they have a computer that, like, keeps track of everyone's lives and stuff. But it's, like, DOS. It's, like, the black screen with the green. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Anyway. So. Um. Ba-ba-ba. Eun-young and in pick up Haman from the hospital, and everyone seems happy. Haman's like, I don't need these antacids or whatever the fuck <laughs> Eun-young was giving her to help her stomach. And Haman asks in if he can drive her outside of her radius. And she is relieved to finally see that she can go wherever she wants now. Also, they also gave her a belly button. Yeah, I was gonna say, also <laughs> she says, having a belly button tickles. So... <laughs> Weird. Um, back at the school, jellies are starting to take over now that Unyan can't take care of them. Minyu and Wansu are drawn to the basement and decide to open it up, and their nasty umbilical cord thing grows back, and it's gross. It's, like, green now and, like, yeah. pulsating. They're gross, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna say, those two are, uh, I don't like them. Mm-mm. They're two gross characters. And we kind of learn about this a bit more, but it seems like the jellies and the negative energy really preys on, like, the Mm -hmm. Mm weak-minded. So they are just, like, whatever. Little pawns in the jelly They're, like, perfect, perfect weak example. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Of who they can take over and Mm -hmm. draw that energy from. No conviction in any. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't like their new umbilical cord thing. <laughs> um, Heyman reveals that NPO's father, grandfather, built the school on the pond with the intention of harnessing the power with the Happiness Safety Project. And NPO and Unyang are a little shook after hearing this. And so this kind of starts the confusing part for me. Mm-hmm. Because... It would appear that, okay, (laughs) I'm still confused because we have the Happiness Safety Project Mm -hmm. and Ilguang Sterilization. Mm -hmm. Ilguang for short is because I'm not going to keep saying Ilguang Sterilization. (laughs) Um, And so in the, like, manual to take care of the school or whatever... In Pio's grandfather, it seems, made it clear to only hire Il Guang sterilization. 
Mm-hmm. But it seemed like he had a happiness safety project ring. So mm-hmm. I don't know if he kind of brought the two together. And then mm-hmm. after his death, they splintered and were trying to... Fighting over. Yeah. Because we'll get to it later, but there are like people from both who mm-hmm. are involved in all this drama with NPO and his grandfather and mm-hmm. stuff. But I was just like, wait, which side is he on? Or was he on neither side and he was bringing the two together and sides only formed after he died? Mm-hmm. That seems most plausible, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also just in general, I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just don't get, like... I don't even know. I'm, I have nothing to say. Okay. <laughs> we'll try to uh, keep moving on. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Impio and Unyang are like, okay, so your grandpa did this on purpose. Wow. Mm-hmm. What a piece of shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, a wave of weird jellies goes through the school as Unyang hands in her resignation. Impio can't believe it. But she doesn't explain that she can't see jellies anymore and instead gets after him for not being more apologetic for the actions of his grandfather. (laughs) And um, Unyang kind of has a bit of a temper and does Mm -hmm. not really like explaining herself. Yeah. She totally could have just been like, hey, I can't do this anymore. Can't see Mm -hmm. jellies. I'm kind of pissed at you. Really more at your grandfather. And I just need some time to take care of me. Mm -hmm. Let's circle back later. This isn't the life I want. Right. So, like we said, the jellies appear to feed off of and create bad energy, which sends the school into fucking chaos. People Mm -hmm. start being, like, really big assholes. Like, I guess it brings out the um, homophobia in people Mm -hmm. and just, like, general shittiness. All of their, like, yeah, all of their shitty thoughts that they wouldn't normally say out loud. Right are just bubbling up to the forefront. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone is crying and laughing, and MPO is like, what the fuck? Because he's really the only normal one at this point, mm-hmm. because he has that like little force field around him. Yeah, he's protected. I feel like Mackenzie might also be kind of more in control of the situation. Um mm-hmm of his jelly seeing ability and whatnot but he's just kind of like loving it because he's trying to get to the basement Mm -hmm. with the happiness safety project so npo starts investigating and tries to contact unyoung but he can't get in touch with her so he decides to go to the fishing site that he mentioned earlier okay also another side note I googled swastikas, because mm. appar- like, did you see them? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So apparently they are a symbol of good in Hinduism and Buddhism, and then anti-Semitic Germans took it and made it a symbol. Well, of course they did. Of hate. Yes. I was reading up on it. Can't even come up with their own goddamn symbols. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I get- according to an article I read on the BBC, um, apparently... These Germans were reading, um, oh shit, I can't remember, like Sanskrit text, I think. Mm -hmm. And they were like, wow, they're very similar to us Germans. And it's like, yeah, people are people, guys. Maybe think of it that way, but whatever. But they were like, no, Mm -hmm. there must have been some, like, white Indians. And that's how they came up with the (laughs) Aryan race. Like, some white people who knew Sanskrit and that's like that's what happened because alex was like but like those people are brown (laughs) and i was like yeah they were like freaking delusional fuckers who yeah i don't know it's it's all messed up but you will see because i saw a few of those symbols Mm -hmm. in korea and like i guess the Typically, the Nazi way faces one way, and, like, the Buddhist and Hindu way faces a different way, like, the way the the tails are facing. You don't really notice that right away upon the first look. You just see it, and you're like, oh, shit. 
Yeah. We're not going in there. <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, it's, I think it's supposed to be, like, a warding off bad thing, gotcha. like, a, a good thing. Yeah. In Hinduism and Buddhism. Hmm. Not a skinhead thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, anyway, just to clear that up. Okay. Unyoung gets bored at home and reaches out to NPO after seeing the school on the news. Because she's like, oh shit, maybe I should not have left. Mm -hmm. Um, NPO finds the fishing hole abandoned and all dried up. And they realize that the happiness safety project was probably responsible for stealing the energy. I think because there was like an HSP sign at the fishing hole or something... Mm -hmm. But then also, Unyoung looks back at the maps that she took from Mackenzie's place, and, like, they had areas on the maps that were marked off. Yeah. Okay. So, Unyoung and Impyo realize that the Happiness Safety Project and Il Gong have been feuding with each other over the school for a while, and they both need Impyo's force field to take control of the basement, which might be why Mackenzie was trying to grab in Pio's beepus. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, it, like, goes on this little thing about, like, how everything kind of revolves around Pio, and that's why everybody wants him, and mm -hmm. everyone is, like, curious of, like, who is he talking to, who's he spending his time with. Mm -hmm. and everyone wants a little piece of Pio. Mm -hmm. So then we see, this was kind of, like, plot twist, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Unyoung's acupuncturist friend is the head of Ilguang's sterilization, and she purposely put Unyoung at the school to try to regain control of the breathing hole. Because I think she is like, we don't need Inpyo. If we use mm. Unyoung, she yeah. can kind of do our bidding down there. So, Unyoung tells Hwasu that she won't be a part of this fight anymore, and Unyoung meets up with Inpyo, and they decide to end everything and remove the Opji stone, since Unyoung can no longer see the jellies and protect people. Also, there's a picture of Hwasu with Inpyo's grandfather. So, mm -hmm. that's why I was confused, because I was like, which side is he on? Because also, he was in that picture with, or he, uh, the picture of Inpyo with his grandfather had, like, the Ilguang, mm -hmm. someone wearing the Ilguang jacket in the background. So, I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So. Ba -ba 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 -ba. They go down to the basement, and Unyoung comments on how she loved being normal, but Impio says being normal is boring. But did she love being normal? Because she looked bored. Yeah, she looked kind of depressed. Yeah, she was just like, I mean, her soaking in a tub seemed nice. Mm -hmm. Um. But after that, she was just laying on the floor so and doing like a weird butterfly movement yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i feel like she didn't actually love it she just probably felt relieved but like mm -hmm. no i don't think she was actually happy um yeah in um, likes kind of weird union so, mm -hmm. they get to the stone and union momentarily lifts it up but immediately Okay, so she lifts it up, and Pio's like, wait, like, I wasn't ready. So she puts it back down, and she's like, fuck, we shouldn't. This was a bad idea. We shouldn't do this. And we realize that she can see the jellies again. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, let's let's get out of here. But Pio is like, okay, I'm ready now. And he just, like, lifts up the stone as she's saying, like, we shouldn't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And, like, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> so... <laughs> After the stone is lifted, Un Young runs away sobbing, leaving Inpyo behind, which is really shitty because before they lifted the stone, he made her promise, like, we're doing this together, right? Like, we won't leave the other one behind, right? Also because he has that bad leg, so he can't run. Yeah. And so she's like, yes, we're in it together, blah, blah, blah. But then she just, like, fucking bounces yeah, I noticed his fucked up leg this time. Okay. And he was struggling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. I know. So, Unyoung runs to her office, and she knows her powers are back as her magic sword powers up. Inpyo is rightfully pissed, mm -hmm. um, but makes it to the hallway and screams out for Unyoung. 
They meet up and hold hands again. And I guess all is forgiven? Question yeah. mark? Um, <laughs> they walk out of the school and watch it crumble behind them. Because they just, like, let the jellies and all of that energy from the breathing hole run rampant. Mm-hmm. Um, we fast forward a bit and hear that they rebuilt the school and hired a new set of teachers and the students are happy and healthy now and Eunyoung seems a little bored again because now she's just a nurse. Mm-hmm. Um, not that being just a nurse is like an easy job, but, you know, compared to taking down jellies, being a school yeah. nurse is probably, you know, not as exciting. So... Then Roddy comes in, who is Heyman's girlfriend, I guess. Mm-hmm. The um, red hair. Yeah, Roddy and maybe red. she's, like, maybe an idol also. They kind of talked about that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Weird. Um, so she comes in and asks Unyang if she can help her mom, who sees ghosts. <laughs> and Unyang has, like, a creepy smile, and it's the end of episode six. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. <laughs> I want to know why we didn't see, like, the best character, Mackenzie, again in these two I episodes. Because I really liked his character, and I really liked the story that they were going with with him. Mm-hmm. And I understand, like, he's on one side, blah, 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 and, like, they mentioned him, but, like, his story just kind of died. I know. I... Like, I get why the Heyman story was, like, poignant and important for mm-hmm. Unyoung. Um, because we really get to see how miserable she is with yeah. her fate in, or her lot in life. But that's why it would have been good to have at least, like, one or two more episodes. Because mm-hmm. I really wish they would have maybe just dedicated one episode each to, like, Il Guang. And yeah, the, that would have been the safety project because, like, I'm confused as to one how they harness the power of mm-hmm. the the breathing hole. What they plan to do with that power? Yeah, because it says like you can control the nation. Mm-hmm. Cool, but like, was Impia's grandfather controlling the nation, or was he just protecting were they, it? Yeah, were they? Is there one side that's good and one side that's bad? Are they both bad? Yeah. Like, we don't really know any of that, and it's hard to know, like, who to root for. Exactly. I guess we're just rooting for Eunyoung and Inpyo, but, like, I really wish they would have explored, like, how Hwasu knew Inpyo's grandfather, and, like, Mm -hmm. how did the Happiness Safety Project and Il Guang, like... Yeah, I feel like, um, instead of the flashback with her friend... Mm -hmm. Which was also good and was a good story and everything, but maybe a flashback with the grandfather Mm -hmm. and, like, building Mm -hmm. the school and meeting people or, like, seeing these different characters Mm -hmm. would help to kind of tie things up and make a little more sense of what was happening and how this all came to be. Mm -hmm. For Mm -hmm. sure. Because, yeah, I... Like I said, I enjoyed it, but I was just like, wait, what? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the imagery a lot. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really fun to watch and look at, and I loved the colors and the weirdness of it, how unusual it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just left kind of confused mm-hmm. as to what actually happened. Yeah. And what everything meant. <laughs> yeah, and again, I'm wondering, like, how much of it is maybe lost in translation, like, Mm -hmm. if we had some of those translation notes Mm -hmm. that they do on Vicky. I don't think it would have answered all of the questions, but it maybe could have given us a little bit more context as to why people are saying the things they're saying, or, you Mm -hmm. know, kind of, like, double meanings Mm -hmm. of things. Totally. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I guess, like, at its base it is like the story of a woman who you know is just trying to take control of her own life Mm -hmm. and like kind of managing the expectation of like helping people versus doing what she wants to do Mm -hmm. so that's a good story Um, yeah it's just like the 
the meat of it is like, Mm -hmm. but how? And why? (laughs) And most of the jellies were really cute, too. Yeah, the jellies were really fun to look at. I love the little octopus jellies. Yes, I was just going to say. When they were trying to run away from the flood, poor Mm -hmm. babies. I know. (laughs) They just make such cute little sounds. Yeah. We never saw, like, nut seeds again. Like, nut seeds were such a big thing in episode three and four. I know. And he was just, like, causing chaos at the school with the kids, and I like that. <laughs> Giving kids nut seeds. And, like, yeah, like, straight That just pot. ended. I don't know. Yeah. And I wanted more interaction between Mackenzie and Young because it was really funny. Yeah. And, like, Ga Young made another appearance but i'm like i wish mackenzie would have been there instead of ga young like i don't really is ga young the teacher the other teacher she's that girl the friend she's the friend who was also i think trying to get mackenzie's beepus but by (laughs) like flirting with him in pios in pios yeah 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 she wasn't i don't know her and then that other teacher, the other teacher that, like, just didn't talk. Who just smiled they showed her again. Yeah. I don't know. I wanted more Mackenzie because that character was funny. Yeah, for sure. He was funny and, like, a little asshole. For <sighs> sure. Okay. But that's School Nurse Files, guys. Hooray. Yay. Um, Yay for weird TV. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so like we said at the beginning um the next couple of episodes are going to be kind of more bonus fun stuff rather than the new mm-hmm. dramas so make sure you're subscribed to see all of that cool stuff um jill and i are going to do another year in review so if you guys would like to tell us which dramas helped you get through 2020 <laughs> and just you know stuff like that Let us know. Yeah, in general, what was your favorite drama? Yeah, send us a tweet or an email. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, again, let us know which drama we should do after the holidays. And also for our 100th episode, a little teasy tease, (laughs) if you want to send us some fanfic that you think we would really enjoy, now is the time to do so. So yeah, that's all we'll say about that. <laughs> that's all we'll say. So that's all we'll say. With that in mind, uh, do you have anything else? Um, no. Just keep watching dramas and mm-hmm. like the podcast and rate the podcast and mm-hmm. hang out with us. Yeah, that's about it. When you're not hanging out with us on the internet, wear a mask and mm-hmm. be nice to be people. a good human. Yeah. That's, that's about it, I yeah. think. Okay. Hug an animal. Yeah. Drink some water. <laughs> mm-hmm. Eat good food. Uh-huh. Go for a walk. Yeah. Uh, okay, so next episode will be fun, and I'm really excited for it. So <laughs> <laughs> I guess we will talk to you guys next week. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>